Good morning, this is Chantel with the Morris Microstead and today I am going to be cleaning out the quail coop. So I started cleaning out the quail coop and um, I was just admiring how my Tibetan quail are so much more mild mannered and curious than my um, than my new quail, which there are some like different pharaohs and Italian and fab fees and just different markings, different um, species of the Caternix quail. So I thought I would jump on and share a little bit about that because I was discussing with a friend earlier about, well, a couple days ago, about the different temperaments, how um, flighty quail are. And my quail, my Tibetans, who I've had a little over a year now, um, are really mild-mannered. They're really curious when I'm cleaning out. They're not running. They're not flying away. They come and they scratch the sand where I have been. Yeah, you helping, Mama? They scratch the sand where I've been digging. They know it's nice and loose now. And also, I was hanging out with one of my quail gal pals, and she she encouraged me to put wood chips down in my quail pen, which I think is what I'm going to transition to. We do sand, which is really easy to clean, and we do straw and wood chips in the chicken run, which turns into a deeper method. And I haven't done that with a quail because they poop so much, I was really afraid of getting maggots, but she just kind of reminded me um, that the quails will eat the maggots. And so um, quail poop a lot, and we deal with flies, and we really have to do some damage control when it comes to the flies. So I thought I would just um, pop this camera into the quail pen and you guys can see the quail and check out uh, me cleaning the quail coop and we're going to transition into some wood chips today. Quail eggs. Ready? Do you want to let it go another day or two? Or do you want to let it go another day? Yeah, let it go. All right. Watch out. Okay. Yep, I got some eggs out. This is I don't know, can you see? This is a Tibetan lady. This is a Tibetan lady. She is mostly brown. Really like calm. But these are my juveniles. Let's see, who can I get? These are my juveniles. This is, I believe this is a foul fee. I'm still learning some of the markings. And there's a lot more flighty, a little more skittish. Still learning that I'm not gonna eat them. Well, I mean, eventually. Not them, they're kids, you know. Let's do like one more bucket full. We've cleaned out most of the sand and I have um, like wood chips down instead and I don't know like I think I'm gonna bring in a pan of sand or something because they really 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 like to dust bathe and usually when I lay down the sand it's like the first thing they're doing is exploring that sand and dust bathing but um, they're not like showing that excitedness right now which makes me kind of sad but I think that in the long term this will prove to be like a better maintenance of the um the manure so yeah this is what we're going to go with so i wanted to talk a little bit about the coop um my husband designed it it's four by four long or no i'm sorry four 
four feet deep, four feet high, and maybe no, it's four feet deep, five foot high, and six foot long. And that makes it to where I have to duck down just a little bit, but because um, I'm 5'5", five five and my husband's like 5'6", five or 5'7". Um, and so I have to duck down just a little bit, but it's not, it's not so bad that I can't spend long time, periods of time in here, like cleaning it out and stuff like that. You don't want it, you either want it like really short, because some people use the, um, the hutches, and we wanted, if we're raising our own meat, we wanted to do it in a way that did not mirror like meat industry. We wanted a more natural, um, like presence. That's just kind of like what we prefer. And so it means we, we can't do it on a larger scale. I can't hatch out like 100 birds at a time or 200 or whatever. Um, I can only have like two cubbies. But in this, in this pen, anyways, if I decided to do another setup, we could. But that, this is what we're doing right now. Two cubbies is like one male and four or five females. So I can do two cubbies. Um, in the pen, we have, I'll turn it around here. these grasses which were um, a gift from a friend she, they transplanted and you can see I don't know if the quail will let them grow back there's some greenery coming back but it seems like the quail eat it back so I don't know if this will last but if it doesn't we'll definitely put either some potted ones in here that was a male's a male's call uh, whatever you crow um, and so or Oh, that one just there did it. Um, so yeah, we'll either put in some potted ones or we'll just continue replacing the grasses because they are happiest in this corner. Around the coop we have some things planted uh, for mostly for flies. Um, I have le lemon balm here and here planted in the ground. Yes, I know it is invasive and will go crazy. That was the point. Because um, I can chop this down and drop it into the coop also. Um, and then over here we have sage, um, huge like sage bush, and then you can't see but behind this egg box here I have lavender planted and some nasturtium mostly for appearance because um, I love nasturtium, but hopefully the lavender will help that corner. So we're still experimenting with the fly control, the herbs around it, but in the meantime I've got lots of herbs planted around to drop in the box and to gift the chickens and the quail. Do you see this guy? Yeah, we hear you. Big man on campus over here. See? And so here's like the Tibetans. And they'll... Oh my goodness. They'll come in here and they will, um, if I'm like shoveling, they will like stand in my hole and dig out my hole. Here's another one here. I've got four of them. They're my original birds. And these gorgeous um, marked birds. Oh, this white one is a male. I did not know that. Um, these gorgeous marked birds are from my girlfriend Mandy, who is an amazing, amazing uh, quail enthusiast. So I think that's it. Um, some like we or some maintenance that we do is my husband comes out every like two weeks or so, and usually he rakes the sand. I think we'll end up raking this to stir it up rather than rake it out, um, which just feels so wasteful with the sand because we're not putting it anywhere. Because from what we experienced in the past, it grows maggots. Because um, we were putting it in like the garden beds, like we do the chicken waste, um, and that was was not good. So um, so hopefully with the um, wood chips it can break down a little more and we can put it on the waste on the um, the garden beds in the fall if we do the chicken bedding. Um, but the sand it just it, it's it's good maintenance wise because we can keep it clean uh, but the productivity or the waste um, aspect of it is not ideal for us. So that's it. We love our Copernic Quail. It's the way that we provide meat on our micro homestead here in suburbia. Um, we are only on like an like approximately 8,000 square foot lot, so it's it would be difficult to manage a clean like meat chicken prod, um, production here in this space. And so um, quail are super easy, super minimal um, space requirements, um, and they're just really delightful. I love hearing their crows. I have not heard any complaints from the neighbors. Um, they do fly, so we can't like free range them or let them out in the yard or anything like that. Um, but yeah, we really like them a lot, and they're just really charismatic, and they're a fun um, bird to have on our on our micro stead, our little farm here. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you for joining me. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, hopefully, we'll be putting out some more videos as the garden grows in. And until then, happy homesteading, friends.